So, Rainbow Six Siege. It's a game that I used to come home and play for hours on end, and I mean hours. I've put almost 2,000 hours into Siege over a time period of 5 years, and I gotta say, none of it was worth it, but that's completely besides the point. I loved Rainbow, but now the game sits uninstalled in my Steam library, and I have zero plans of ever reinstalling it. And it makes me ask, how did Ubisoft fail Rainbow Six Siege? On December 1st, 2015, Rainbow Six Siege was released to the public. And it wasn't exactly the tactical shooter that Ubisoft had promised, but like, close enough, right? It was classic Rainbow in its fullest. Destruction, tactical team gameplay, and whatever the hell this is, it was perfect. Well, not really, but like, at least it was fun. But it was honestly just lacking. The menus were bad, there weren't many operators at all, the running was laughable, but IQ, now she was perfect. Yeah, it was a mess. But that was gonna change. See, Rimu's main draw was all of its unique operators, map destruction capabilities, and <laughs> tactical gameplay. Ubisoft had built very solid foundations for the game, but they knew they needed something to keep current players returning, as well as bring in new players. And with that, on February of 2016, Operation Black Ice was released. Operation Black Ice and its operators could be accessed through a $30 season pass, or players could outright buy them with 25,000 in-game earned renown. Yacht, being probably one of the worst maps in Rainbow's history, was also released for free with Operation Black Ice. Rainbow had struck gold and they would milk this thing like no other. So yeah, Yacht sucks. It's definitely one of the worst maps in the game, but at the time, it was kind of promising. What was at the time a rather bare bones game had just released an update to give players two new operators that could shift the meta as well as a new free map for everyone. Ubisoft did promise more seasons and a continuous release of content like Black Ice, and with this, the season's quality would, you know, hopefully increase. Now this was a big step for Rainbow and Ubisoft, but the game still was not perfect in any way shape or form. It was unbalanced and there were really bad game mechanics, but it was still fun. There was nothing and no one that was so broken that made Rainbow unplayable, but Ubisoft planned on changing that soon. And in only three months, Ubisoft would release Operation Dustline. It came with two brand new operators in Valkyrie and, <laughs> and Blackbeard. Now it is impossible to mention the history of Siege without mentioning Blackbeard. He broke the game entirely. Even Ubisoft's artwork presentation director Alexander Karpazis had this to say about Blackbeard. When he launched, he was one of the strongest overpowered operators we ever released. He ruined Ubisoft's unique one-shot headshot mechanic, and you know, whether or not you think that's a good idea is up for debate, but nonetheless, it was Ubisoft's unique mechanic. And Ubisoft obviously nerfed him. Now I won't get too into detail about him, as there's hundreds of videos explaining how truly broken he was, and this one's already going to be long, but you just need to know that Blackbeard is, he's sort of where Siege's issues truly began. So Ubisoft's response wasn't one big nerf to Blackbeard, it was just to nerf him to oblivion over years of updates and make him almost unplayable. This was definitely a bad sign for Siege. Instead of buffing its weaker operators to balance the game, they took away the uniqueness and strength of the good operators. Now of course, some operators definitely require nerfs. I'm looking at you, Ella. But the response to every operator, good or bad, was to take away gadgets, grenades, and even nerf abilities, so every operator would sort of be evened out. And as the community complained about it, it made no difference. It seemed Ubisoft was now modeling their game for the pro community, and ignoring, you know, the 99.9% .9 casual community. Now I don't necessarily love Pro League, but I'm sure many of you do, and that's amazing. But Ubisoft's main issue was it kept trying to balance the game for the pro scene, and it ignored, you know, the majority player base that isn't pro. Now apart from the sweaty Koreans stuck in their mom's basement, no one was asking for these unnecessary balancing changes. Why take Bucks grenades? Why take three ACOGs away? Well, actually that one might have been necessary. Why ruin a console player's aim with a nerf to Zafia's recoil? And why take Sneak Bitch's silent step? And for the love of God, why take Yana's booty? 
Now back to that Zafia point. On console, aiming is hard. Like, really hard. And recoil control is so much harder than it is on PC. It took me years to be able to accurately flick my joystick, and when you play different operators all the time, spraying is so much harder. And Zafia was one of the only operators who always felt perfectly and properly balanced, especially for console. But now, she's just kind of a worse Ash. And I really don't understand the point of all these unnecessary balancing changes and the push to make the game more like Pro League. Like Ubisoft, please, we do not want to play like pros all the time. I mean, 50% of the player base are in the mid to low ranks and some above average ranks like Plat, but stuff like this happens constantly. I can't understand why Siege didn't just stick to what made it so attractive before with this extremely unique destruction capability that just demanded your attention. Of course, not every update that Ubisoft put out was lackluster. Rainbow Six Siege had an undeniable prime from Operation Velvet Shell to Operation Parabellum. I won't say the game was in its best state during this time period, but I think it's when Siege's players and its community felt strongest and most enjoyed the game. We had a consistent two operator update, as well as new maps almost every season, and the quality of these maps and operators were exceptional, except for a few. It seemed like Ubisoft really cared for and listened to the players, attempting to fix bugs and glitches and adding quality of life improvements. Operation Grim Sky was released on September 4th, 2018, and dear god, did this season suck. And although its player count doesn't really show a decline at the time, I think this is definitely where Rainbow Six Siege started to die. Operation Grim Sky saw the introduction of the, uh, fan favorite map reworks with the new and improved map in Hereford Base. And for whatever reason, Ubisoft became obsessed with the reworking maps after Operation Grim Sky. And although it wasn't an inherently bad idea, the issue is when these maps were reworked, except they just weren't any better. Essentially, Ubisoft would take one of its classic maps, some of your all-time favorites, and rework it. They'd fix it up and make it a playable map, and that was the issue. They would just change your old favorite maps into watered down new ones that had a hundred new angles to peek that you had to relearn. Now the game was far from dead. It consistently reached peak player counts and even crossed an astonishing 50 million player count in September of 2019. But its issues were only getting worse. A lot worse. Hackers. Hackers had always been an issue in Siege, and I mean always. But since I was on console, I never really had to suffer through the rampant hacker frenzy that plagued Siege for so long, but I still understand its importance. And in mid-2019, Rainbow Six Siege and BattleEye were overtaken by hackers. In almost half your games, you would run into a hacker and there was almost nothing you could do about it. You could report them for toxic behavior and hope BattleEye might ban them in like three months, but what good was that? And now of course, every game has hackers. Every game has someone that wants to ruin someone else's fun, but I've never seen a AAA company fail so badly at handling a hacker epidemic like Ubisoft had. Well, maybe not never. Nonetheless, hackers took over Siege and Ubisoft went quiet. Now it'd be hard to argue that Ubisoft had always been a responsive company. However, at least with Siege, they had generally listened to the community on the really important issues and tried, and I do not say that lightly, to fix the game. Now whether you think the game was in a good state is a personal opinion and it's up to you, but at the very least Ubisoft and its dev team showed that they cared for Rainbow and its continued success. But that went away for almost no reason. It seemed like the passion from the dev team had died and they had gotten lazy for no explicable reason. This was evident by their lack of continuous content, operators, maps, and what felt like no new guns for almost an eternity, and as reimbursement we received substandard map reworks for the lack of content. 
There was less to keep older players hopeful and to keep playing the game, and at the same time, there was even less to bring in new players. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, it's rough for new players. See him. He doesn't move. And combine that with Siege's almost impossible learning curve, new players just weren't motivated to play a game that really wasn't having any content added that was already almost impossible to play. And with all that in mind, Siege for some reason decided that in year 5, season 4, they would only be adding one operator per season. I don't understand this company. They claimed it was so they could focus on core game mechanics, but how come almost a year later the game is in one of its least fun states that it's ever been in? Now I don't know if Ubisoft understood this, but watering down every operator and their abilities to make them all balanced ruins their uniqueness, and what drew players to them in the first place is going to make them just play someone else. And while I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way, I'm sure the devs still cared, and I imagine it was probably Ubisoft just pushing this. But for some reason, it just seemed like they were only focusing on Pro League and the profits that came along with it. And now I know only little Johnny behind the keyboard thought so, but it's not like even the majority of the community was some godsend player that was going pro. I mean, most of this player base is in high gold to low plat. And obviously, Siege does need balancing changes, but that doesn't mean you just nerf the good operators instead of buffing the weaker ones. Siege was just shooting itself in the foot so many times, and it was just making this game so unbelievably boring and repetitive. Now finally, my last point is on console. And while there isn't explicit evidence to prove this, it's estimated that anywhere from 60 to even as high as 70% of Siege's player base plays on console. And that's almost unbelievable considering the state that it's in. Now while I'm sure a majority of you watching have already quit this game, you know what I'm talking about. But if you haven't, when you play a game on console, a ranked game that is, there's about a 40% chance that someone on the enemy team will DDoS you. And how will these players be punished? Well, that's the funny thing. They won't. Although these players are blatantly cheating and exploiting a system, Ubisoft just kind of sits silent and leaves the community to assume that everything might be fixed eventually. And Siege on console is currently unplayable. And with all the hours that I've poured into Siege, especially on console, I can safely confirm that a lot of your games get DDoSed. I'd probably say over the course of 5 years that at least 80 to 100 games have been DDoSed. And while that doesn't sound like a lot, that's a lot more than it should be. Combine that with mouse and keyboard, it makes console just a really unenjoyable experience. Now unfortunately, Ubisoft can't really do anything about either of these things. And I'm not sure of the pressures and the challenges that Ubisoft faces as well as its devs for Siege, but this game just needs more continuous content, or it's just doomed to die. And Ubisoft has to know that this game has been out for 6 years at this point. Now I think one main thing that would save this game is two operators coming out again, as well as one new map and each operator having distinct guns that no one else has or at least one of the operators having new guns. In addition, I think a complete revamp to Battle Life, or even just the removal of it altogether in favor of a more secure and efficient anti-hacking system, would greatly benefit this game as it would encourage older players to come back. And if the dev team really can't keep up with continuous two operators and quality maps, that's fine. I think maybe one season every six months for two total seasons with only two operators and one quality map would greatly benefit this game. Players would come back for two new operators that have brand new weapons, brand new abilities, and a brand new map, as well as balancing changes that they like. And although you could make the argument that people would have a hard time staying for the full six months, I think it's better than people leaving for a year and coming back to the same exact game as when they left. This game still has a lot of hope for a resurgence. It's definitely in the best mechanical state it's ever been as far as gameplay and gunplay. And as far as balancing goes, whether you think it's good or not, it's still the most balanced it's ever been. I mean, it can't be worse than an 800 health shielded Blackbeard fighting a Malteser. So, Smurfs, Hackers, Mouse and Keyboard, DDoS, less regularly added content, Complaints falling on Ubisoft deaf ears and an overwhelming sense of a failing game in the community. Now personally, I haven't truly grinded Rainbow or enjoyed it for hours on end since probably Operation Burnt Horizon, but I still don't think that Rainbow should be condemned. At least not yet. If Ubisoft has a proper year away 
away from the uh with a solid shot at fixing some of these issues then maybe we can all go home hop on some ranked and once again complain about how broken the hitboxes are now real quick if you guys made it all the way to the end thank you so much for watching i truly can't express how grateful i am as this is my first commentary kind of video and expect a lot more like this in the future my quality is only sure to increase, and I have a ton of more interesting topics that aren't even gaming related on the way. Please leave a comment for anything that you guys might want to see in the future for any kind of game, and yeah. And I'm only going to ask you to please subscribe and like if you truly think it was a good video. And if you think it was a bad video, let me know how I can improve in the comments. And with that, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Now unfortunately, on October 11th, 2021, Famed and favorite Rainbow Six Siege Pro League commentator Kickstar tragically passed away in a fatal car accident. He brought a profuse personality that Siege has been lacking since his passing, as well as at least my favorite Pro League commentator of any game. The community has been so respectful in his passing and I just love to see it, and it truly encourages me to see Siege's community finally come together on something. And speaking for everyone in the Siege community, we love you Kickstar. May you continue your heartwarming and stellar announcing wherever you are. Thank you. On the peakers! Ow! The plant going down. Bio has to cover. And he's gonna do a great job of it, but no! Jarvis drops from CEO! Bio still has time to win the fights, but why are you sprinting, Bio? I will see you guys probably tomorrow. What day is today? Maybe tomorrow. I have gym tomorrow. Usually I'm pretty exhausted, but we'll see. Um... It was a good stream today. Hope you enjoyed it and bye bye. You guys are awesome. And I'm so grateful for each and every one of you.